Good afternoon. Welcome to Santiago de Compostela Parish. 
We especially welcome the people who are watching on live stream. Welcome for being here today with us. And we welcome the people here. So let's take a moment and, and introduce ourselves to the people around us we might not yet know as we come together as one community. one people in the Lord's family. We take a moment now to run towards the Lord's arms and ask for his compassion and his mercy in order to worthily celebrate these sacred mysteries. You teach us with authority. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
let us pray. Grant us, Lord our God, that we may honor you with all our mind and love everyone in truth of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. to all the people, saying, A prophet like me, will the Lord your God raise up for you from among your own kin? To him you shall listen. This is exactly what you requested of the Lord, your God at Oreb. On the day of the assembly, when you said, Let us not again hear the voice of the Lord our God, nor see this great fire any more, lest we die. And the Lord said to me, This was well said. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their kin and will put my words into his mouth. He shall tell them all that I command him. Whoever will not listen to my words which he speaks in my name, I myself will make him answer for it. But if a prophet presumes to speak in my name an oracle that I have not commanded him to speak or speaks in the name of the other gods, he shall die. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Tempted me, they tested. 
tested me though they had seen my works if to Our reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I should like you to be free of anxieties. An unmarried man is anxious about the things of the Lord, how he may please the Lord. But a married man is anxious about the things of the world, how he may please his wife, and he is divided. An unmarried woman or a virgin is anxious about the things of the Lord so that she may be holy in both body and spirit. A married woman, on the other hand, is anxious about the things of the world, how she may please her husband. I am telling you this for your own benefit, not to impose a restraint upon you, but for the sake of propriety and adherence to the Lord without destruction. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Then they came to Capernaum, and on the Sabbath Jesus entered the synagogue and taught. The people were astonished at, his, astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority, and not as the scribes. In their synagogue was a man with an unclean spirit. He cried out, what have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Jesus rebuked him and said, Quiet, come out of him. The unclean spirit convulsed him and with a loud cry came out of him. All were amazed and asked one another, What is this? A new teaching with authority. He commands even unclean spirits, and they obey him. His fame spread everywhere throughout the whole region of Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ.
Good evening. Today's gospel has uh, a lot to teach us about the spiritual life, especially about uh, evil, evil spirits, but above all, about the power of Jesus and his authority to cast out uh, evil in our lives. The first thing we hear in this gospel is on the Sabbath, Jesus entered the synagogue and taught. The people were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. And the first point is this, that the words of Jesus have authority, just like how a judge has authority to sentence or set free, or a referee has authority to say uh, pass interference or a touchdown. I know Father John will appreciate that one with the Super Bowl coming up. He's sad, though, because Green Bay is not in the Super Bowl. Are you sad, Father? Yeah, he's sad. <laughs> well, just as those words of, of men have authority, Jesus' words have authority. And not just because they're words of men, but because they're words of God. You know, nowadays there are some people that sometimes they, uh, they'll say, they'll claim, you know, Jesus is not God. He's just a wise teacher. He's a guru. He's a, you know, he's not God. And you might have seen this even on TV or in books or whatever. But if we look at the life of Jesus and we read the Bible, we find that Jesus himself says in the Gospels, Amen, I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. If you remember in the Old Testament, I am was the name revealed to Moses as the name of God. Jesus takes this name to himself. Amen, I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. In the New Testament, Jesus goes around forgiving people's sins and the scribes and the Pharisees, they cry out, they say, blasphemy. How can this man claim to forgive sins? Only God can forgive sins. And that's exactly the point. Who can forgive sins but God alone? And finally, just this past Christmas, we heard from the prologue to the beautiful Gospel of John. It begins, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. Jesus is the divine word made flesh dwelling among us. His words have authority because they're not merely words of, of men. They're words of God. Next we hear this. In their synagogue was a man with an unclean spirit. He cried out. Dick and Dan did a good job of proclaiming this, by the way. What have you to do with us? Jesus of Nazareth, have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Notice that Jesus didn't do anything to directly provoke the Spirit to do that. He was just teaching and preaching. And all of a sudden, the Spirit just reacted and, and cried out and yelled. Sometimes, those who don't have God deeply rooted in their hearts, others who may have been hurt emotionally in the past and haven't fully healed yet, or uh, those of us who may have grown up in a very tumultuous environment or household, can sometimes act like the unclean spirit, reacting, you know, just yelling, shouting, accusing, crying out. Isn't it true that in recent days, we've seen a lot of that in our country, our nation, our world? We've seen a lot of this, right? A lot of yelling, a lot of shouting, a lot of crying out, accusations. Isn't it true that sometimes we can find this in our own families, you know, accusing one another, attacking one another, and sometimes even in our own hearts, that, that kind of crying out, that attacking, that accusing, all of that 
comes from the evil spirit, the unclean spirit, the enemy who wants to erode our souls and provoke us to a reaction. Notice also how the unclean spirit refers to itself. It doesn't say, what have you to do with me, Jesus of Nazareth? What does he say? He says, what have you to do with us? What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? When the devil attacks or invades or infiltrates, he never does it alone. He does it with his buddies, his companions, the other evil spirits. We've just mentioned, you know, the anger, the violence, the shouting out. But there are other spirits as well. You've learned this, uh, you may be in CCD, the spirits of uh, pride, of envy, of gluttony, of greed, of lust, of all these different spirits. And if we find ourselves battling with one or more of these spirits, let's say, for example, you know, I'm struggling with my pride, I'm, I'm a prideful person, or I'm struggling with lust, that's part of my life. We shouldn't be surprised if we find the other spirits involved in our lives as well. What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Well, what's the remedy to all of this? How do we get rid of those evil spirits, those evil influences in our lives? We listen to these words of Jesus. Jesus rebuked him and said, Deacon Dan also did a good job of pronouncing this. Quiet! Come out of him! The unclean spirit convulsed and with a loud cry, came out of him. If we want to be free of vices, habits, addictions, those evil spirits that we just mentioned, the remedy is to allow Jesus to enter into our hearts and to say those same words that he said to this man in today's gospel. Quiet! Come out of him! Come out of her! Be gone! That's the remedy. And when Jesus does this, it's going to be painful because the, the man convulsed, right? He convulsed, the spirit came out of him. If you've ever seen somebody that struggles with an addiction, through whatever it might be, during the detox process, what do they do? Right? They convulse, they shake, they tremble. They're not used to it. They have to let go of what has been enslaving them on the inside. And when Jesus comes into our life and says, quiet, get out of him, get out of her, this is what happens to us too. It's, it's painful, we can convulse. But this is also the path to be free from those things that shackle us down those evil spirits that have control over our lives. This moment, I'd like to invite us to uh, a moment of prayer uh, to invite Jesus into our heart. Uh, I'd like to invite you to, to pray with me now, just to, to close your eyes, and I'll lead us in a short prayer to invite Jesus into our heart. Lord, you know our hearts, you know our lives, and you know us better than we know ourselves. And you know, Lord, that some of us have come today battling with some of these evil spirits that we've just heard of. And these spirits take different forms. Envy, pride, greed, lust, depression, anxiety, Whatever it may be, Lord, you know what we have in our hearts. And you know also that as much as we've tried to, to get rid of them, to be free of them, we've tried and we've succeeded, but then we failed and it's been a tough journey. We need your help. 
And so, Lord, in this moment, we ask you to enter into our hearts, to enter into our lives, and to say those words to the evil spirits in our lives, the same words that you said to the man in today's gospel. Quiet. Come out of him, come out of her. Be set free. Lord, we know too that this process might be painful, so we ask that you accompany us with your tender love and compassion. And as those evil spirits are gone from our lives through this process, we ask that you replace those things with your peace, with your love, with your grace. Thank you, Lord, for listening to our prayers, for always answering them according to your most holy will. And we ask this prayer in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And as one family of faith, we together profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father, he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Our faithful God hears our prayers and our cries. With confidence, we present to him our petition. That religious sisters and brothers and all who are yet not married, who are anxious about things of the Lord, serve the church and the world with holiness of body and spirit, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That school children know the joys of learning in a safe environment, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That the sick and those who are near death feel God's tender concern, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That this faith community of Santiago de Compostela answer the call of Christ to serve the poor, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. And the intentions of this Mass are offered for the eternal repose of Santiago Corral, the eternal repose of Diego Zavala, and for Father Martin Vu. That's me. <laughs> we also pray in thanksgiving for Ray and Lorna Martyr, Gloria Madaran, Buena Pineda, and Saul Burgos. We pray for our sick. James Leoncio and Roger Inson Jr. And we pray for uh, the souls of our dearly departed, Lazaro Santiago, Edwin Garcia Pamplona, 
Hector Medina Gay Jr., Rosalina Santiago, Leinaldo Santos, Remedios Estocapio, Romeo Fernandez, Lorenzo Celis, and Noralyn Dumagat Reyes. And in a moment of silence, we offer to the Lord our own prayers and petitions, as well as those already placed in our Ark of Prayer chat. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord our God, you deliver us from every evil. Listen to our prayers and make us worthy followers of your Son. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O Lord, we bring to your altar these offerings of our service. Be pleased to receive them and transform them into the sacrament of our redemption, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death. And by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Oh, so 
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Some history of As we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Kevin, our Bishop, Timothy, Thomas, and Todd, his brother bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them in the light of your face. And mercy is all we pray for the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who please you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co heirs to eternal life and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. now join together with those praying with us online as we pray our prayer of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
this time, we will have a special collection that supports our own parish's St. Vincent de Paul Society. All your generous donations are used to help families in our parish who may be in need at this time. So as always, we ask you to be as generous as possible. Having received the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, we take now a brief moment of silence to receive him deeply into our hearts. Let us pray. Nourished by these redeeming gifts, we pray, O Lord, that through this help to eternal salvation, true faith may ever increase. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We turn now to Mary, our mother, as we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And uh, I believe last week, Father Thomas introduced the prayer to St. Joseph, correct? In this year of St. Joseph. So we can find the prayer up there as we uh, turn to him and pray. Hail, guardian of the Redeemer, spouse of the Blessed Virgin Mary. To you, God entrusted his only son. In you, Mary placed her trust. With you, Christ was secure and safe. Blessed Joseph, to us too, show yourself a father and guide us in the path of life. Obtain for us grace, mercy, and courage, and defend us from every evil. Amen. And finally, we pray to St. Michael, who looks like he flew away. <laughs> we can still pray to him, though. St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. 
And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. And today also, um, Father Martin is celebrating a birthday. He, so welcome, happy birthday. Maybe if you could join me in a prayer of a blessing and a prayer, let's raise our hands over Father Martin. Father God, we offer you praise and thanksgiving for the gift of life. Bless your servant, Father Martin, as he celebrates the day of his birth. May he continue to grow in faith, hope, and charity all the days of our lives. We make this prayer to Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> Thank you. Today I turn the ripe old age of 31. <laughs> <laughs> the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you and all of your loved ones, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God.